Hey, party people. So we are here with 6.7 infrastructure. Um, some of this should be familiar to you guys. We've talked about infrastructure in a variety of ways throughout this whole school year. So for um, this objective, we need to be able to explain how a city's infrastructure relates to local politics, society, and the environment. So essentially, the location and quality of a city's infrastructure directly affects its spatial patterns of economic and social development. So overall, infrastructure. This is just the basic support systems that are needed to keep a society and an economy running smoothly. So there are many examples, right? We have transportation systems, power stations and power lines, Wi-Fi, sewage systems, schools, police and fire departments, hospitals, all sorts of things. All this is included within infrastructure. So for infrastructure and development, the location and quality of a city's infrastructure directly affects its spatial patterns of economic and social development. So we're going to take a look at some examples of uh, maybe more infrastructure or more developed infrastructure and less developed infrastructure and what that means for uh, places development. So locations within a city that have high quality infrastructure are typically more economically and socially developed. Infrastructure is typically funded by the government via tax revenue, so more economically prosperous areas will have better infrastructure. So if there's more money to invest into infrastructure, there's going to be more development and so on. It's almost like a cycle, right? So where do we typically see this? We see this in capital cities. We see this in high income areas of cities and also within core countries. So again, this idea of core, semi-periphery and, and periphery countries, we see this a lot more in core countries. So if we look at this photo above, this is New York City. Just take a minute to pause this video and then just ask yourself, what kind of infrastructure do you see? Try to think of as many things in this photo that you can identify. Okay, so hopefully you identified plenty of um, elements of infrastructure. So let's take a look at hospitals and then also transportation routes. So how does access to a strong network of hospitals encourage social development? So we see things like the ability to be able to treat and prevent disease and illness. Um, that means that there's less sick people, there's less spread of illness, and overall the population is healthier. Also, when you have hospitals, that means that there's jobs available in healthcare settings and that employ people living around the hospital. So there's less unemployment. And typically we see people who are employed at hospitals getting paid higher wages than maybe other types of jobs. So again, that, that all helps out that, that entire community. For transportation networks, how does access to transportation routes encourage economic development? So businesses have reliable ways to transport goods make money and hire more workers. Employees are able to easily travel to and from work, make money and spend money to stimulate the economy. So when you have a more um, infrastructurally developed place, we see social development and economic development, it all goes hand in hand. <clears throat> So for, again, this idea of location and quality of a city's infrastructure affecting its economy and social development, um, there are places within cities or in different parts of the world that have low quality infrastructure that are less economically and less socially developed. So maybe infrastructure is informally developed. Um, due to lack of assistance from government. Um, there might be favelas, squatter settlements, barrios, things like that. Low income neighborhoods periphery, in periphery and semi-periphery countries. So we see this more so um, in places that are not within the core. So here in this photo, um, this is one of Brazil's favelas. So go ahead and take a pause on this video, just like you did with New York. And just think about what type of infrastructure do you see and, and also think about what are some differences between this photo and the one from New York. Okay, so hopefully you paused and wrote out your little list. So looking at, um, again, the same example of hospitals and transportation routes, how does a lack of access to hospitals negatively impact social development? So essentially there's less treatment, less prevention of disease and illnesses which means that there's more sick people, which means that illnesses spread more. And overall, we have unhealthy populations. And also there's less high paying jobs available in terms of transportation routes and how the lack of that can negatively impact economic development. Businesses cannot rely on transportation of goods. Um, they might make less money 
and they'll have to spend more money on transportation. Also, employees are unable to easily travel to work. There's less productivity, more money spent on transportation, and also um, instead of being able to buy luxury goods uh, that would stimulate the economy, they're there spending on transportation. So overall, we see less infrastructure or less developed infrastructure affecting social and economic development of a place as well. So how does this interact with the environment? Um, this idea of not all infrastructure is created equal, that is so true. We need to be able to evaluate the sustainability of infrastructure. So asking questions like, does the infrastructure impact the environment negatively? Does the infrastructure take advantage of non-renewable resources? So let's take a look at this example. Using coal to generate electricity pollutes the air. So yeah, there's electricity, but what kind of effect do we see within the environment? Could investments in renewable energy sources be more sustainable for the environment and emit less pollutants into the air? So overall for renewable energy sources, we have this little image here um, to keep in mind of um, different ways that we can see infrastructure being